Thank you for registering with Kerala Startup Mission. We have come up with this webinar series named Inspire to Innovate to engage the student community during this lockdown period. We really hope this would bring interest to you and will support you in your entrepreneurial journey. With this in mind, we have scheduled 21 web seminars on the topics innovation, technology, and business. Every day will be a 40 minute knowledge packed interactive session where key speakers, including startup founders, academicians, and industry leaders will inspire you to innovate with their knowledge and experience. So the webinar scheduled today will be a 40 minute session where we have Mr. Arun Surendran sir, principal and strategic director of Trinity College of Engineering, Chirantrum. Welcome you sir. Thank you. You can ask questions at the end of the session by typing the questions in the Q&A box below the screen. So I request each of you to take this as a wonderful opportunity to connect with him and make the most out of the session. On behalf of Kerala Startup Mission, I would like to formally invite Aaron sir to take over the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sreekuti. I uh, hope uh, I'm loud and clear to everybody. This, as uh, she just pointed out, is an experimental uh, session, a new kind of uh, webinar is being hosted by Kerala Startup Mission. So I would like to thank the uh, Kerala Startup Mission for organizing something like this and giving me the opportunity to conduct the opening session. We hope uh, we'll iron out and uh, uh, discover some glitches which can be cleared up in the upcoming sessions. Special thanks to uh, Trinity College of Engineering IEDC uh, and their volunteers and leads for uh, agreeing to host this one. And uh, uh, IEDC members from all the other colleges, friends from uh, young Indians all over India, and uh, my dear friends. Uh, and before I start, I would like to uh, mention a special thanks to the Modern Book Center Trivandrum, who have been uh, my supplier of all kinds of knowledge and expertise from around the world for the last several years. So we have 40 minutes. Uh, obviously, this is a vast topic, and it's an extremely relevant topic because uh, the world is facing an unprecedented uh, traumatic situation where we need to use all the innovative spirit of the entire humanity to come up with uh, solutions and come up with them really fast. So uh, we would like to encourage, inspire all of you to take up the challenges that come to you. And uh, in this session, hopefully we can discuss a few of the things that constitute the process that's called innovation. Uh, before we get into it, I'd like to share a brief uh, story. Uh, there will be no uh, uh, slides or uh, other kinds of presentation in this. It will just be talking because uh, we want to see if the technology part works smoothly. I want to start with a story and apologies because most of us are, I mean, all of us are sitting at home in a lockdown. Uh, this is about vanilla, right? Vanilla that is the most popular flavor of uh, ice cream in the world. Now, vanilla was impossible to be cultivated outside of Mexico, Latin America. The uh, Aztecs and the old Indians, when the Spanish conquistadors reached there, they discovered that this particular plant was being used partly as a currency, as a great spice. But uh, when they brought it back to the other lands which were colonized across the world, they just, uh, couldn't uh, get the plant to bear the pores. So it's like a bean pod from which uh, the vanilla essence is extracted from the flower. The reason was that a particular bee, which can live only in uh, Mexico and Latin American uh, climate, uh, was responsible for the pollination. And that couldn't be replicated anywhere else. Now there is an island called Reunion in uh, the Indian Ocean, uh, there you will find the statue of a young boy called Edmund. He was an African slave boy and he is credited for having brought vanilla to the rest of the world. This was in 1841 when uh, he was working under a slave owner called Pharaoh who used to show him all the botanical uh, it, you know, uh, details that are needed for a slave to work in the farm. But this young boy one day managed to bring up a flower and a pod, much to the surprise of everybody else. And he managed to do that using just the pinch of his fingers. 
as a boy he had smaller fingers so he could do that and the statue currently shows him in a position it almost looks like he's about to toss a coin and the story clears uh, a few myths about innovation right this was a this was a slave boy in africa and this was a youngster and he went about changing the world and providing us all with this wonderful ice cream and also uh, in the same story he was freed immediately he was celebrated there is a statue but the rest of his life did not live up to the expectation of something that this innovation would have brought him so there is a lot of lessons about discipline and things like that which can be drawn from the story and with that about innovation not being something that happens rarely in the world and it may not may happen only to privileged people that's a myth let me get on to the topic for the day which was uh, the art of innovation now those two words are very interesting uh, innovation and art so let's look at innovation first right how is innovation to be defined uh, mit uh, uh, which is the premier institute of uh, innovation in the world uh, they have a wonderful book called disciplined entrepreneurship and i recommend it to most of you who are interested in entrepreneurship and startup uh in that bill olet who is currently heading the school of entrepreneurship there uh, he cites a definition by ed roberts who was the earlier head of swan school of mit so he says innovation is invention plus commercialization that was ed roberts's uh definition for innovation and i would very much like uh, most of you if you have anything that can take down notes uh, to please do so so that later on you can share the memory map that you've created so that i realize where i lost track or where i should have stressed better so that was the definition innovation is invention plus commercialization what bill olet did was that this is a sum it's an addition he converted it into a multiplication so he says innovation is invention multiplied by commercialization so in case there is no commercialization the whole innovation becomes zero now we don't have to look at commercialization as to mean completely profit making we can look at it as something that can become widespread in use something that becomes accepted in the society it may not generate profit but unless the invention becomes popular we cannot consider it to be an innovation for example uh, many of us right now in the lockdown period are continuously innovating stuff in the kitchen right we are uh, combining uh, food items creating new food items a lot of us are managing to make youtube videos and put it hoping that the recipes get accepted and socially it tends more towards the innovation stream but these are the beginnings of innovation where there is in invention and then we are looking at making them popular so why innovation is important because in entrepreneurship there are two kinds of startup companies one are the major kind which is innovation driven where they do something that is inventive and commercializable and the other one is the msmes which are more like a franchise model businesses that exist but then you know change of locations like change in processes and things like that so that's the innovation part the second important word there is art right why it was in the seminar webinar i i didn't name it it got uh, named and given to me from uh, startup mission why was in it called the science of innovation like what distinguishes uh, art from science so scientific method the famous video by richard feynman uh, says it's it's very easy uh, to understand what constitute science right science has to be reproducible it needs to be universal it is not an opinion uh, gravity is same for me you an american for the dog cat everybody it's not a matter of subjective opinion it is objective and there are experiments and if the experiment fails then your hypothesis doesn't mean anything so that is the way that science operate but the moment we look at art and why innovation is an art is because there is a subjective element in art there is always the artist and an audience somebody who creates but then the popularity the acceptance the admiration the criticism everything comes from the involvement of some other human being and this is the human centered part of it and innovation is very much a human centered activity so science we know how science can fail how science experiment can fail a hypothesis can fail 
But in the case of an art like innovation, the failure can have multiple reasons. And quite often it's not a failure in a very objective sense. It's just that it was prematurely abandoned. It didn't find the right market. It wasn't marketed in the right way. It didn't have the finish that was expected and so on. Those are the two main things. However, there is an important warning or caveat the moment we talk about something being an art. There is a cultural uh, you know, block, conceptual block for most of us that if it's an art, then it means it has to be an innate talent, right? We are all exposed to all the star singers and kid singers and all the series where it's considered an art and it is talent. So we don't tend to look at it as a skill, but then look at the great artists and what they have talked about their art, right? Look at Michelangelo. Michelangelo's most famous statement when he was 87 years old, attributed to him, not very sure whether it belonged to him, but it says, Ancora Emparo, which means, and yet I am learning. This is an 87 year old who created most of the masterpieces of sculpture. And he says, I'm still learning. So there is a process, there is something that leads to constant improvement. Look at August Rodin, the other famous uh, sculptor of the, the Thinker statue, right? He says, I don't create, I only rediscover. So there again is a process involved. We have fine arts colleges, we have fine art schools. So something is being taught. There is, There are the tools, there is a training involved. There is a method to the madness, right? So we would like to explore what those methods are. Uh, can we adopt them? Uh, can we adapt them to the particular problem that we are looking to solve? And obviously, this cannot be like uh, my loss of innovation or your loss of innovation or Kerala's loss of innovation. These will always be the fuzzy uh, ways to do things. The processes that we refined, they need to be fine-tuned. They can find differences. We cannot have a classroom session lecturing followed by an exam and then qualify somebody as an innovator. This is a process that involves maybe apprenticeship works better. It's always a hands-on training that matters. So what we are trying to do, and obviously I cannot, or anybody cannot promise to give you a seminar or a two-day workshop of how to innovate, right? We can only discuss the common characteristics that have been found in majority of the successful innovations that have taken place. So we have come through the definition that involves commercialization as well as invention. We have seen why this is meant to be an art, much more than a science where there is subjectivity, there is a personal touch to the whole thing. Now, let's look at uh, what we can do in this very short span of time that's available to us. Let's first look at the, the types of innovation, right? Uh, what are the different major types of innovations, right? There are the, the three Ps that I look at. One is product. There is something that's physical, a product that's being innovated. Then there is the process. It can be a business process. It can be an educational process, something that was being done in a particular way, but now we innovate and tweak it so that it gets done in a better way. Everything is about efficiency, making the world better, doing something easier, making lives better. And the third one is a pers perspective shift, right? This is where you know, religious innovation or spiritual innovations or how to ideate, how particular ideas can be changed by innovating the perspective of the person. The other two famous types that are usually discussed are disruptive innovation. And I think uh, our startup mission CEO, Saji sir, will be presenting something on disruptive innovation very soon in this series. Disruptive innovation and the other one being incremental innovation. But actually these two are totally different categorization, right? Disruptive innovation is defined based on the impact an innovation has on the market, how much it can change the status quo. Incremental innovation is actually true for all kinds of innovation. These are all step-by-step -step process. For example, the most common thing that we can all relate to is umbrella in Kerala, right? It's an incremental innovation. Every year they come up with something new. We had Arduino charged things which have um, built-in fan, light, LED, um, charger, everything. So these are step-by-step -step innovations, but look at aircrafts, right? I am basically an aerospace engineer. So I would like to use the example of Wright Brothers. We would consider the airplane to be a disruptive innovation, rightly so, because it changed the way the world transports, how people move, it made massive impact on transportation and global culture. And uh, you know the, the way the world economy operated, but creating the airplane in itself 
was a very very incremental act so we'll uh, as we move along we'll keep the friendship of right brothers so that we know how something that appeared to be a major leap looks like a leap because the steps are invisible or the steps are obscured or in some cases uh, most commonly what happens these days is that we mythologize the founder right there will be a creator who is considered to be the super genius who came up with this thing out of thin air uh, that helps a lot with marketing but if you dig deep in you will realize the trials and tribulations and failures and multiple setbacks that are faced in the very long term slow drawn process called innovation so uh, looking at wright brothers one of the first important features that we need in innovation is immersion immersion into what's currently available in that particular area that you are looking to innovate so you need to be curious about everything but you need to curate the curiosity as in please be careful about what is the information that i'll accept what is it that needs to be rejected what is fake what is worthwhile what is relevant and especially now where we are bombarded there is this very famous letter that wilbur wright wrote to the smithsonian museum in united states way back in 1890s 1890s where he asks for provide me every single material written uh, reading material that is available about human flight and flight in animals and birds so he is asking for all the knowledge that is available before looking at it so that he can get himself into the immersive context where innovation can begin his brother orville wright uh had a bout of typhoid where he was bedridden and that was the time when bilber takes up this challenge and they seriously both of them immerse into reading this and thinking about this looking at whoever has done things in the past and then they immediately bring that about right they set off and um, many of you might know they initially had a publication which was their first business they ran a weekly magazine then they had a very successful bicycle shop so these are bicycle engineers who then realize that an, an aircraft is a bicycle that should fly because they are interested in powering it they are interested in controlling it and there is also a perspective shift right brothers were the first people to realize that the problem of flight is a problem of balance just like the bicycle so you had to train the pilot along with creating the machine so these are steps they did because they tested out every single single hypothesis that was given out people had given measurements of you know aerofoil shapes lift drag ratios etc they did experiments and they figured out these things and coming out with problem statements of what exactly is it that we are trying to solve right not just say we just want to fly but then observe the birds how do they manage it so what is it that we would like to recreate in the situation so uh, one of the things that helps with problem solving so this is where again when we try to innovate we are trying to do that to make some lives better so we need to talk to them and real recognize from them what exactly is the problem that they're facing one of these uh, the, the famous techniques that the japanese use from toyota group uh, sakichi toyota's five whys right don't stop with the first why uh, when when something is asked for example why did you come late to the class that's a single why where you'll answer that i didn't get the bus now to go deeper into the problem you need to ask a why why you didn't get the bus because you came late to the bus stop you ask another why and when you can do this in the context of technology when you can do this in the context of a problem faced by somebody go with five whys at least so that you get to some kind of a root cause from which you can begin an analysis and solution to the problem there are multiple techniques that will help you get to root cause problems and uh, the the fact of the matter is communicate you need to talk a lot so it's not just ideation being pulled out of thin air you need to talk to people uh, assess the market before and and talk to experts and so on before you come up with solutions right and and in this matter the richness of your language the the jargon that you can use the technology that you are aware of the ideas that are floating around in your head they all enrich this particular aspect of problem definition so if you consider the the design thinking aspect of it of human centered design what do we do first we kind of uh, uh before we develop and deliver an idea before we define an idea we go on a discovery path so it's a diverging discovery path 
followed by a problem definition that's converging. Then we develop again, and then we deliver. So it's the double diamond thing that I'm talking about. Now, what are the other things? Once you are curating and you are amazing, uh, amassing this thing, you need to trust there's a little bit of intuition, which involves um, sleeping and getting the subconscious to work, daydreaming about the thing, starting from Albert Einstein onwards, I guess Kekul and everybody else. They had their best ideas come to them when they were passively processing all this data that they had put into their own brain. So uh, the other thing that I come across very frequently when I'm uh, talking to young innovators is that uh, they're afraid that their idea somebody else might have had or somebody else would be thinking about it in the same time. This is very well documented, okay? This is part of the immersion. Ideas whose time have come will come to hundreds of people at the same time in different parts of the world. Maybe in your own college, there will be two, three guys who come up with the same idea at the same time. This, is, this will happen, but this is just the idea or inspiration stage. And innovation is not inspiration. Innovation is executing this thing. That takes a lot of discipline and sticking to the task and then going along with the process, which is painful, which many, many, 99% of the people who are inspired by the idea won't pursue. So that's where the hope lies. And that's where we can make ourselves different as innovators. So the second part of the process involves something that is rapid prototyping, where once you have an idea, you quickly put together something, test it, See, if it fails, then you come back. Failure in innovation context is a learning experience. It's not a judgmental experience. So you come back, you immediately correct it. So we keep on prototyping again and again so that we get to a final product, which will be very useful for everybody. Now, uh, in, when we do Jugad innovation, which is we are not expecting it to catch on with a big market or sell it or make a business out of it. Sometimes we'll compromise on this and quickly finish whenever we have done something that barely works, which is how you know mostly the college projects stop at that level, which is where the IEDCs could step up and try to make them into saleable projects, products which are you know really required by the market. The second, uh, the third important thing to remember in the process is asking for help, right? Quite often I have seen this happen that uh, people are afraid that if they ask for help, then their idea will leak. But that again goes back to, it's not the idea that is important, it's the execution that is important. And please be aware that criticism, this is like growing a tree. The criticism is like fertilizer, it's like pesticide, it can help kill off the unnecessary elements in that. Do not take this personally. Quite often that's what happens. When people talk about a product, we, are, we live in a very judgmental society, right? We're very happy about going back to that uh, reality TV show thing. We are very happy to comment on other people's skills and talents and, you know, pass judgment on whether they're good or bad. This is, this is something that the innovator must face and adapt. Look at everything as something that is being said about the product or the process or the project that you're doing. Look at it as a fertilizer. It's not a judgment about your character or your abilities or skills. It's about that particular thing. And if we can adapt it, if it looks good enough, then take it. One of the techniques that can be used is to get other people to be invested in your success. So when you ask for feedback, when you ask somebody for help, uh, have three things clear in your mind. Am I looking for appreciation? Right? You made a project, you made a prototype, are you just taking it to somebody it's just so that they'll say, wow, this is wonderful, you're great. If appreciation is what you're looking for, then you won't be happy if you get an evaluation or worse, if you get some coaching and criticism. So please be aware whether you're looking for coaching, whether you're looking for feedback, or you're just looking for evaluation based on that person's experience. So once you're clear, what's the kind of feedback you're looking for? it becomes easy for you to adapt that thing. And this is very, very important because unless the other brains, as many brains as possible, can come into working of a project, uh, we will be stagnated by our own limitations and personality biases, which are very strong. The second thing, when we are doing this feedback thing, don't get attached to your product till it is in the final stages. It's your great idea. It's an idea that can change the world, but it needs to be fine-tuned, uh, you know, get all the corrected parts done. That's where the feedback is useful. So do not get so attached that you refuse to listen to extremely valuable feedback that can come from almost anybody. 
because people have a wide variety of experience in a wide diverse areas of operations that they do so we need to listen as much as possible to as much feedback as possible in the case of right brothers people believe very large set of the population believe that it's impossible for human beings to fly but these guys were trying to make it happen and they were trying to make it happen by suffering through mosquito swarms staying in this place called god for sake and kitty hawk where there was nothing a few fishermen in the fishing village and they were conducting their experiments and look at this the brothers decided right at the beginning that they will never fly together because they were aware that this could kill them they are conducting experiments and they know this can kill them so they decide that only one of us if something bad happens only one of us should go and the other one will have all the knowledge and experience gained so far so this is the kind of innovative spirit with which things were operating at that time with those brothers and they had feedback from people like octave chanud they uh, read a lot about otto lilienthal in germany who lost his life trying to glide uh, and lilienthal also had a brother so these brothers could relate much more and they were listening to langley samuel langley who was uh, establishing a big aerodrome a much high powered thing in washington with all the government funding and these guys were trying to do everything in under 5000 dollars and there were 50000 dollars project that was happening in a government funded way but listening to everybody including their father the family the local people the fishermen all kinds of feedback all kinds of engineering feedback all kinds of social feedback can be built in right Uh, and and for the right brothers even after success by 1903 they fly but their first market is in france and uk united states never listened to them for years people didn't believe that successful human flight had happened it's worthwhile noticing so don't look for success in your immediate market as well it can happen other people might recognize that what you have created is very valuable for them so this again will come only if you are taking it out to the world be happily showing it around at that time now uh while going through the process right we need a lot of encouragement we need a uh, the spirit to be kept high the closest that we can think of which is a human activity by which we learn is play so we are playing around with ideas we are playing around with possibilities but we are aware that if it's a good game the game will come with its own rules the game will come with a referee so there will be deadlines there will be constraints we enjoy watching football football has rules cricket has so many rules right but it's a great game there are infinite possibilities varieties we are charged by there's a high spirit about it look at it like that there will be opposition team as well whoever doesn't want anything to change the people with massive inertia they are always there in the society they are the opposition with whom we are playing so if you look at it like that then it is it becomes easier to keep our uh, spirit up and always be part of the process and two modes that every innovator successfully must operate this is not like a split personality or you know schizophrenic personality but it, it comes pretty close for 80% of the time you are being this artist who innovates and who pulls out ideas from all over the world and trying to um, tinker with it and failing fast and quickly building getting feedback and so on but for 20% of the time you need to do something very disciplined which is the documentation which is the intellectual property rights that you are concerned with this is where you need to establish that what you are building really matters once it is completely successful and this is where you know you have to build a habit and as bj fogg's famous book on tiny habits says all habits have two major components one is the motivation to do it to make the change and the other one is the ease of action and usually what happens is motivation is the most unreliable thing i'll be highly motivated on a friday morning and completely demotivated by the time it is evening it's human life part of the human brain that's what happens so the only way to successfully build habits is to make them easy to do so restructure your habits of innovation in such a way that they are easy to do no matter how high or low your motivation is something gets done so if you can do that then all this documentation part where we are looking for reports to be filed grants to be done the intellectual property part where you need to use um, agencies like startup mission support you need to collaborate with other people who have abilities and skills and qualities which you do not have right so that's the 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 final part which i want to discuss which is 
financial discipline you may not have it you may not be thinking a lot about money about how to use the project funds or things like that you need somebody in the team who can do that or you need a mode of yourself where you will sit down and solve that part as well you need marketing right and uh, a, a true blood innovator somehow disdainfully looks upon this whole business of trying to sell the idea trying to market the idea trying to convince other people that what you have done is super duper but that's essential you need to change your habits in such a way that you can start building your marketing skills otherwise get hold of a team which can do that right get hold of somebody who has really superb skills in those things this is where you know the public private partnerships work out very well where somebody knows the feel of the market somebody can take things to the market very fast so these are skills that we need to bring in so that we can be a successful sustainable innovator in the long run so you can look at how many unsuccessful artists are there and how many successful artists are there the successful artists are the people who have found their market and who know how to sell their artistic work as well so the last example that i want to quote in this so we started off with vanilla and then i'm going to finish off with the other item that is not available these days which is alcohol at trinity college uh, our most famous innovation story is the breathalyzer which was used by kerala police right uh, most of the trivandrum segment uh, still continue to use it and this was two years ago where we built it so this was a continuous iterative process where we knew the customer the customer was the kerala police and they wanted this device and they would continuously uh, refine their requirements and this was great because initially when we started we were thinking about a very idealistic uh, thing where there will be an led screen that shows the reading and so there will be a beep and people will know and that made the device a bit large so what happened was that anybody who was coming down and who could see the police had a led green light somewhere in their hand would quickly turn the vehicle around and go back so we had to remove the led screen and get the reading onto something else then it had to be small enough to fit the pocket so that people could not identify it from far then we innovated again where the readings could go directly into a mobile phone so that you take a very tiny sensor part of it which does the sensoring and the pro- the sensor of the, the mq3 sensor which senses alcohol and then all the processing gets happened in an android or an iphone so this kind of combination was multiple iterations where you start with the product you go into the market you study what changes they are recommending and then go back in so uh, this is all i guess we have time for it's almost 540 so um well i would like to quickly recap this is about seeing what other people don't see this is about imagining what doesn't exist in the world and then continuously working very hard to build it so that it becomes a reality so that pretty much sums up what i wanted to say uh, i think we can take some questions or otherwise i'd be very very happy to continue this discussion on any online forum that uh, startup mission can prepare so that i can learn something from you all and your ideas as well and i can share with you gladly whatever experience we have had in the past uh, trying to innovate thank you very much for listening thank you so much sir uh, it was a very informative session and i would like the participants to uh, if you have any questions you can uh, shoot upon that q and a chat box in your window so i think uh, so you can can you view the q and a uh, part yes let me do that there are a few questions uh yes siddharth has asked wait let me okay oh, this is moving very fast so okay the, one of the questions is what if uh, somebody is not able to have enough money for buying the necessary resources yes. this is exactly where you know organizations like startup mission come into the picture they can uh, give you a great list of grants that are available funds that are available once you can refine your idea and put it up as a presentation we have so many idea fest contests that are happening so please get in touch with uh, startup mission sure uh, there are uh, resources i mean uh, like idea fest and idea days should be conducted by startup mission so people can access our website and uh, those programs will be listed there another question uh what was the book that i mentioned in the starting part well 
Oh yeah, the disciplined entrepreneurship by Bill Ouellette. That was the book I mentioned. It's from MIT Press, and there is an Eastern Economy edition available in India. They have a course based on that. Bill A U L E T. His course is available as an open uh, courseware right now. You can take it. Is a mentor required for success? Uh, well, there is no such requirement, uh, and you need to very clearly think about who a mentor is. You you can always get inspiration from people who are no longer alive. Just like I said, you know, Wright brothers. But at the same time, it would always be good to have somebody to bounce ideas off with because this is a long psychological haul for anybody. Because there will be setbacks, and if you have somebody you can go back to, then that will always be helpful. Oh, good God! Too so much, a lot of questions. I'm I'm sorry, I can't keep track of. No worries. I mean, I'll. Is I'll... Marx actually necessary for being an innovator? No. <laughs> no, that did sort of it. <laughs> uh, but see marks are not important but your basic fundamental grounding is important it's not uh, whether you are successful in an exam or not but unless you know fundamentals how to go about it, especially if you are in engineering then it becomes very difficult angel fund i think this is a good set of questions how can we innovate an idea that already exists in the market see uh, i talked about umbrella right umbrellas have existed for so long and every year there will be some new uh, idea that comes up some modern you know fitting that gets added to it that makes it more interesting that's the basic uh, definition of innovation you take something that exists uh, sometimes you take things that existed in very diverse fields when I mean, iphone is considered a great innovation but it brought together what several other companies had built and they managed to put it in one device we have a web browser a phone and a music player in one so this you can do all the time So there was another question in the chat session. Over ninety-five percent of the startups fail in first two years. Isn't it good to keep a track on the reason for failures? Do we have any such mechanism to consolidate such experience? Well, you see, startups uh, are inherently a very risky thing. We do. Uh, there are a lot of studies that happen about why startups fail, and quite often it fails because the team failed. It's it's always the major reason is that. the pulling it together in terms of the financial discipline needed the the engineering discipline if it's a technology company needed uh, and the funding availability for example look at the current scenario right nobody saw this coming uh, so there is a very high chance that lot of dependency on funding that was expected from some corners would die up very quickly but at the same time you should also recognize that the average age of a successful entrepreneur as in companies that have become successful as startups the average age is 45 that's because these people have gone through multiple cycles of this when they say a company has failed it failed in terms of the product that it was trying to bring out but everybody comes out of that experience much much richer so that they can start something over again right look at look at the comparison of see 95% of the startup companies will fail but what is the success rate of uh, somebody who is writing a psc exam let's talk about it in the kerala context right uh, lakhs of people write it how many openings are there so look at the percentage of success and if you are continuously preparing for psc exam you are building your expertise in a very very narrow field whereas if you worked on a startup i can guarantee you even if the startup ultimately fails there will be dozens of engineering companies which want to snap you up because you have built a skill set which are very relevant for the market so in that way it is much better to have been part of a failing startup or a series of startup which went bust rather than looking to focus on something which has equal probability of success and failure thank you for all the positive comments and appreciations that are coming there are excellent books on innovation uh, that's one of the questions that i just saw in passing uh kevin ashton the man who coined the term internet of things he has a book called how to fly a horse okay you will find the vanilla story in that and how to fly a horse is about um, you know the right brothers thing but for right brother uh native book is david mccullough's the right brothers then uh, the other book which i mentioned was bill lolet and then there is uh, range by david epstein which tells you you know the kind of 
diversified reading and expertise in different fields that can bring together a successful innovation. Look for top 10 lists on, list of, uh, list on innovation on Amazon or something. You will come across really wonderful books which can help you keep company at this time when you're in lockdown. And there is another question from a nodal officer of the Polytechnic College. So he's asking, uh, is that no idea is practical? It can be tracked properly to product. So how can we do that the students uh, can get the idea into a product? I mean, you can share your experiences of uh, bringing an idea into finding into a product and then marketing. So right. these people are finding it difficult to, after participating in a, an idea fist or something like that, uh, they right. will uh, find it difficult to make it into a complete product. Correct. See, that is a very common problem because uh, we are uh, we bring up good ideas, but the main component that is missing is the market. We, uh, we present an idea and we present it to people who are experienced innovators who can judge the merit of the idea, but they are not your potential clients, right? These are not people who will buy this thing in the end. So your idea, you should now take it to who are you building this for? If it's a farming product, for example, Amal Jodi College had that uh, wonderful, uh, you know, the farm-based products. Those things are always talked to with the farmers and what they want. Based on that, you can make changes, fine tune. It's very difficult to get money out of somebody's pocket, right? Especially a customer. So if you start talking to them early, bring them into the process, then they would be much more appreciative and they would become champions of your product. And I think, you know, okay, that's business. where the feedback part comes in. I mean, as you discussed earlier. Yes, discuss that the feedback. So there are a few more questions. Uh, can, if we can compile these questions, I'll be very... Yeah, sure. Uh, but we can answers, lots of questions. Uh, I mean, there are more than 300 participants here. Thank you so uh, much, guys. Uh, 340 is the last count that I'm reading, which yeah. is, uh, uh, I think, half of what registered and then kind of shocked us this morning with uh, 800 <laughs> registrations. Sure, sure. But uh, uh, I hope we have managed to have a very good start. Uh, thank you so yeah, much sure. for listening. Uh, Startup Mission has my number. They have my uh, email and contacts. So I'm not on Facebook, but I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Instagram. Instagram is not of much help in this, uh, but uh, LinkedIn definitely. And uh, I think this uh, the website that they're putting together will definitely have uh, where question and answer things can be done. And I'll be very, very happy to help you from whatever little knowledge I have. BTEC plus MBA, good. BTEC plus MBA is good. Uh, if you want to manage engineers, So what, what we can do is we'll uh, compile all these questions and uh, share yes, it with you. Yes, absolutely. And you others, so we can go uh, ahead to ask some questions. You can send to that IDC team email. They, they, they will I mean, consolidate every questions and try to answer most of them. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. It was a very wonderful session. I mean, you were citing some uh, real examples to uh, put up that uh, types of innovations and the uh, process which we have to go through. So it was really informative, and I hope uh, you're also. <laughs> I mean, thank you, Rasik. Uh, thank you. Hope we have wonderful, wonderful sessions uh, rest of the series as well. Thank you very sure, much. Sure, right. So the rest of the sessions will be start, starting. I mean, tomorrow uh, the time and other details are listed on the IDC websites. Uh, so you can go there and register for each of the sessions. And the whole calendar is also listed there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.